All right, viewer S. Milan, I hope you're subscribed or at the very least watching because this video is for you. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rick's Garage. Today's episode is actually going to be a follow-up to the HFP episode where I received a question from a viewer asking me to compare the HFP suspension and the regular Honda Civic Si. For those of you unfamiliar, HFP stands for Honda Factory Performance. Now this is a dealer installed accessory kit that Honda's decided to put on certain vehicles over the years. And in the case of Civics, it's reserved for the Si trim. For the 10th Gen Civic, the kit comes with a whole new suspension, along with wheels, tires, and a bunch of other goodies, but for today's comparison, I'm going to be focusing only on the moving parts. For more info on the 10th Gen kit, click this link to Episode 5 for a full contents breakdown. Having purchased and installed my own HFP kit, it puts me in a little bit of a unique situation. Reason being is that normally the only comparison that you'd be able to make between the two setups would be on a half-hour test drive. But now that I've had the opportunity to get some real mileage with both setups, I can tell you with certainty there is a huge difference between the factory SI suspension and the upgraded HFP. All right, now one thing I want to make perfectly clear is that I did install the white line sway bars at the same time as I did the suspension, so I can't tell you 100% how much of that difference is made by the sway bars and how much is done by the suspension itself. What I can say is that after phase one was finished and I took Miss Vicky back to Honda for her alignment, Dave Tremblay and I went out for a ride afterwards and he commented that the ride was much firmer than a regular HFP with stock sway bars. That being said, I cannot say enough positive things about this suspension. In the original episode, I had hoped that the HFP kit was going to bridge the gap between a good performer and daily driver suspension, and I'm very happy to say that I'm not disappointed. I definitely think that the Civic Sport button now lives up to its name, because when you switch modes, it's more than just fancy lights on the dashboard to let you know. Sport mode with the HFP dampers is better in every way. Not only is it firmer over the bumps and dips in the road, it's more responsive in corners, and comboed with the white line sway bars along with the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, this thing is absolutely incredible. Beyond the obvious performance aspect, one of the best things about the suspension is actually outside of sport mode. Now, yes, it's nice to have a car that handles like it's on rails while you're racing, but the reality is Miss Vicky's a daily driver. You're not gonna be racing all the time. In normal mode, the car actually feels more normal, if that makes any sense. Again, like sport mode, it's firmer over bumps, it's more responsive in corners, it just makes the car much more enjoyable to drive. Now, unfortunately, I can't find any tech specs specifically on spring rates to compare the two setups, but what I have noticed is a reduction in understeer, which allows for a little bit more throttle going through the turns. Now, keep in mind that the car does have upgraded front and rear sway bars, so that is definitely going to affect how much understeer the vehicle is going to have. But what is understeer? Under and oversteer are terms to describe how a vehicle is going to react when cornering. If these green lines represent the perfect turn, then understeer is when a vehicle wants to continue straight even though you're telling it to turn, and oversteer is the complete opposite. The vehicle wants to hug the inside edge of the track, and the car is actually turning more than you're telling it to do so. Now, generally speaking, oversteer is something found more often in rear-wheel drive vehicles as the rear end of the vehicle is pushed off of the track if you enter the corner too hot. Now, as you can see by this position, if you can hold that severe oversteer, that's a topic for a whole other discussion. More often, understeer is found with front-wheel drive vehicles because the drive wheels have more weight on them and the handling is affected by weight transfer going into the corner. Now I go over the basics on how a sway bar works back in episode 12, but essentially by upgrading one, what that does is allows you to reduce the outward weight transfer when going into a corner. By reducing weight transfer, that also reduces the amount of understeer, allowing you to take that same corner at a higher speed, resulting in a faster lap time. So the burning question is, was it worth it and would I do it again? And I can tell you the answer to both of those questions, along with a couple others, is definitely yes. Is this kit more expensive than some that are available? Absolutely. Would a full coilover setup give me better results on the racetrack? Yes. But is having the ability to turn your vehicle into a race car at the push of a button worth the extra expense? Absolutely. Now, obviously this video is based on my own experiences, but I hope that this helps clear up a couple of questions that you may have had about the differences between the HFP suspension and the regular SI suspension, in case you might be deciding to purchase one on your own for a better informed decision. 
If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for instant notifications as soon as a new video is available. And as always, thanks very much for watching.